We are live at Waxing Moon Company, and this is where you will come on South Braddock Avenue to have your healing session done by Amber. It is a beautiful, beautiful space, as you can see. Hey everyone, it is Erica, AKA Goddess of Magi here, just sitting down with the Waxing Moon Company. And it's Amber, right? Correct. All right, so tell us a little bit about how your business got started. Uh, actually, the idea sort of came to me a few years ago when I was working as an addictions counselor. And just from my exposure there, like it felt like things were missing in terms of treatment, um, especially in regards to like the spiritual health of things. Mm -hmm. um, so just between like working on myself and studying other things, I put together some different practices. Mm -hmm. um, I know what I'm doing right now. <laughs> okay. um, let me backtrack a little bit. So between like components missing in terms of treatment, mm -hmm. um, I also saw that overall there was Complimentary, cert, complimentary healing is not really accessible to much of the public, just be, just with their prices. Okay. It's so like I wanted to bring about alternative healing while still being accessible and like try to incorporate a more holistic approach. Okay. Yes. Okay, and is that primarily in addiction counseling as well? My background is in addiction counseling, but Technically, I can't say that what I do is a replacement for addiction counseling. Gotcha. More like an enhancement to the normal treatment right. that's offered. Right. Okay. So, tell me a little bit about Waxing Moon Company. So, how is how does what you do... Mm -hmm. What's the word I'm looking for? How does what you do assist in the regular treatment process. How does it balance it, if you will? <laughs> right, okay, so um, the main service that I offer is one that I sort of developed on my, on my own called etheric release therapy. Okay. Um, it provides a sort of snapshot of what is presently ready to be released within your subconscious workings. Ooh. So we're looking at different lifetimes, different timelines, different dimensions as well. Figuring out what sort of blockages are in place, whether it's projections from other people, mm -hmm. uh, unprocessed emotions from difficult situations, harmful ties, um, outdated promises or contracts, and as well as other things that could come up, but those are the more common blockages, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And then we release them. Um, and the session usually would end with like, some form of meditation, crystal healing, Reiki, whatever it is that the person needs at that time to like better incorporate new energy and continue moving forward. Okay, yes, I love it. And so obviously looking at it from the holistic spiritual perspective, I completely understand like those blockages and the traumas and you even mentioned like past life. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I understand, right? But for the <laughs> folks at home, can you maybe who might be interested in, in checking into your business, mm -hmm. could you explain how past lives, okay, let's hypothetically say that right. I do believe in them. Right. How can past lives um, affect our lives now? So for those that do believe in past lives and that we've had multiple incarnations, the energies from those past incarnations can carry over into the next lifetime something that is unresolved or, um, again, even some sort of agreement that was made that is not serving in this lifetime could still be affecting the person. Okay. Um, so like a, a little personal example for myself is that there is someone that I know was shown up throughout multiple past lives and um, it had come about that we had some sort of agreement that I would follow their lead in terms of our spiritual development. I'm like, oh no, 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 no. We're not going to be doing that. <laughs> yes. I'm going to grow at my own rate, at the rate that I'm comfortable with, 
you can do the same. <laughs> exactly. Right. Um, for those that are a little skeptical of past lives, though, the way that I try to explain it is that it at least gives someone a story to better understand what is presently happening in their life and like being able to energetically release that and move forward. Okay. Now, in terms of, do, do you access that in like some of your Reiki sessions, the meditation? How do you bring that energy forth? Conversation and the pendulum, actually. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Pendulum action. <laughs> right. Yes. So, all right, and do you find that a lot of your customers or clients are open to this experience? Some of them are a little skeptical at first. Like, you <laughs> definitely get the raised eyebrow, like, you can like, do what? Yes. yes. But, um, but once they have the session themselves, they're like, oh, okay, that, that, that makes total sense. Like, they become more of a believer. Mm. You have to see it to believe it type of thing. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. And obviously for those practitioners who are interested in some of the crystal healing or the, you know, um, the different types of meditation. Now, is it something that you, you said that it's based on what the customer needs, mm -hmm. right? And so you divine that using the pendulum, correct? Correct. Okay. Now, this is, I'm a, I was watching Brain Games the other night so they have like this female versus male thing so curious do you find that more ladies or more gentlemen are open to this experience cool. i feel like overall it's more ladies but it's also dependent on the age group so Ooh, like point. so like men who are 35 and younger actually are more receptive to this type of approach or this type of work than those that are like 50, 55 and older. My dad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I get it. And I completely agree. I've, I've seen that um, as well in doing what I do. So what, I know that there are a handful of massage therapists, a handful of Reiki practitioners. Mm -hmm etc out there it, I think that it's very unique mm -hmm. that you also use divination whereas I've met some Reiki practitioners who just use that intuitive knowing mm -hmm. right rather than an actual um, specific method to divine the situation they just kind of feel it out mm -hmm. so I think that that's a unique uh, addition that you have in your business thank you oh, you're very welcome <laughs> And I know you have a location here. Mm -hmm. um, we are on South Braddock Avenue in Regent Square. Do you do any type of events or pop-ups where people can maybe get a taste instead of purchasing a whole experience? For Reiki, yes, absolutely. Like okay. there is 10-minute um, sessions available at a pay what you can rate. Um, in terms of events, I'm still trying to figure out the best way to implement it because of COVID and this being such a small space. Absolutely. Yeah, I completely understand. <laughs> right. Um, I know that a lot of events have been canceled unless they're outdoors. So mm -hmm. uh, this year has been a challenge for practitioners like us, but it's okay. You know, slowly but surely we are moving out of this energy into bigger and better things. <laughs> um, so Another point that I had wanted to ask you is, how long have you been on your journey, your personal journey? Ooh. Because I'm sure that that played a part in the transition from yeah. what you were doing yeah. before. <laughs> um, okay. So my, I first started my spiritual journey technically back in 2001. Mm -hmm. um, back then I just sort of identified as Neo Wiccan, was all that was accessible to me at that time. As time went on, as I learned and had access to more information, my craft became more of a self-care and healing practice. And that really started about seven years ago. Okay. About seven years ago. And working in a residential facility would like <laughs> push you to start taking better care of yourself, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, I think that's when it really started to come up at that point. And then I just picked up more skills as time went 